have a look at Affinity, Affinity Publisher Best Fonts for Books. Affinity Publisher Best Fonts for Books. Now this is an odd little video because I'm not really building anything in Publisher, just giving some notes on the best fonts that you could use. The only five fonts you'll ever need in Affinity Publisher for that matter. Tried and tested typefaces. And really, the only fonts you'll need. Books are a classic print format, and even with their transition into the ebook world, they still look their best when sat out in one of the following fonts. Now, there's quite a bit of research been done into this, um, and if you keep your font use to a minimum, one of the five, depending on what your uh, book is about, you can't go wrong. One of the first and most basic questions you need to answer if you're going to be creating your own book design is what font should I use? Now going into that, um, this quick little video will give you those five. The first one, for literary fiction for example, is Baskerville. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with Baskerville. A transitional serif typeface which borrows from its old style predecessors, like Caslon, which you'll see below. Baskerville brings together the best of two worlds, classic and modern. It's elegant and intellectual, but highly readable especially when set at small size, which makes it the perfect choice for literary fiction and for ebooks, for that matter, because you can reduce the size considerably and it's still readable. Number two for romantic fiction is Sabon or Sabon, depending on which school you went to. Whether it's a classic Austen reprint or a contemporary teen romance, you want to find a typeface with femininity and elegance in abundance. Enter Sabon, a 1960s update on Claude Garamond's design. This serif is simple and clear while retaining a definite touch of growing up romance. You can't go wrong with setting a romantic epic in Sabon. It's an old style serif typeface and designed by the German born typographer and designer um, Jean Teichold in the period 1964 to 67. And it was released by a number of people in 67. And you can see on that page, it's a very clear, very readable font. Number three, for thrillers and airport page turners, you've got Garamond. Used across all kinds of can't put down paperbacks from Dan Brown to Gillian Flynn. Garamond is a versatile, easy to digest classic typeface, which has a neutrality and versatility that makes typesetting with it a breeze. The updated version of the type, typeface from the original, the Adobe Garamond Pro offers six weights. Team it with more experimental sans serif chapter headings to add a modern flavour to thrillers and action fiction. Garamond is actually a group of many serif typefaces named for 16th century Parisian engraver Claude Garamond. Generally spelt as Garamond in his lifetime, Garamond style typefaces are popular, particularly often used for book printing and body text rather than the um, current defaults that come with your computer. Number four for academic non-fiction, Caslon. The sight of this typeface may for some bring back painful memories of sweating over textbooks in double chem, but you can't deny that Caslon is the perfect choice for academic non-fiction. Set journals, encyclopedias, textbooks and articles in Caslon and its subtle seriousness will convince any reader of its intellectual weight. And again, a little bit of history. Caslon worked as an engraver of punches, 
the masters used to stamp the moulds or mattresses used to cast metal type. He worked in the tradition of what is now called old style serif letter design. It's quite a history and it's quite a beautiful font. You can't go wrong with that one as well. Especially if you're printing a textbook. And last but not least for general interest, Utopia. For typesetting the newest Richard Dawkins or Jared Diamond, you'll want a typeface with a broad approachable appeal. Just as general interest books seek to present factual information or opinion in an accessible format, so your font should strike a balance, not too intellectual, but not too dumbed down either. Typesetting devotees will no doubt still turn to a loyal serif for the task, and Utopia strikes the balance perfectly. Utopia is, of course, for general interest, it qualifies as a transitional serif typeface. Based on 18th and early 19th century ideals of classical des, Adobe's release notes cite Baskerville and Walboom as influences. And Adobe's Sum the Stone has also compared it to Herman Zaff's Melior. With a reasonably solid design, Utopia was sometimes used by newspapers, and you can see why. It's a straight, very readable print. Now, if you're looking for the clickable links, I'll put these in the description, or you could type them out if you want to spend the time. But you'll find all these fonts, Baskerville, Sabon, Garamond, Castellon and Utopia, free for download at those addresses. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Much appreciated.